Hey guys, welcome to today's Maz tutorial. Today our learning objective focuses on multiplying a three digit number by a one digit number using short multiplication. But first, let's get our brains warmed up and ready to learn. Here are four questions for you to complete. Pause the video and have a go. How did you get on? Did you notice a connection between question four and the first three questions? In question one, we are multiplying ones. Two ones times two is equal to four ones. In question two, we are multiplying a multiple of ten by one digit. Four tens multiplied by two is equal to eight tens, which of course is eighty. In question three, we are multiplying a multiple of a hundred. Three hundreds times two is equal to six hundred. What do you notice about question four? 342 times two. Well, 342 partitioned into its place values is 340 and two. We've already calculated this using partitioning. I just need to add the individual totals together. 600 plus 80 plus four. Well, 342 multiplied by two is equal to 684. Now that we are confident with partitioning numbers, we can use this method to multiply any number by a single digit. We finished warming up our brains, so we are ready to move on to today's lesson. In today's lesson, we are learning to multiply three digits by one digit using short multiplication. In fact, once we know how to do this, well, we're going to be able to multiply any number by a single digit. Here's a place value grid and each row has two hundreds, four tens and three ones. So the number is 243. There are four rows, so it's 243 four times. The calculation is 243 multiplied by four. We are going to use the place value grid to really see what's going on when we multiply this number by four. When I multiply, I start with the smallest value first. So here it's the ones. You can see there are more than 10 ones, so we must exchange 10 ones for a 10, like this. Now looking at the tens column, we notice that we will need to exchange here too. I can exchange 10 tens for 100, just like this. Moving to the next place value, I can see there is no need to exchange hundreds because there's only nine. I would need ten hundreds to make an exchange. So looking back now on the place value grid, I can see I have two ones, seven tens and nine hundreds. 243 multiplied by four is equal to 972. In this example, we have multiplied 136 by four. Greg thinks the answer is 424. Do you agree with him? Pause the video now and have a wee think. Let's have a look together. We can see 136 represented with place value counters. There are four rows because we're multiplying by four. Start with the smallest place values, the ones. We can see that we're going to need to exchange. There are 24 ones. So we will exchange 20 ones for two tens, just like this. And we'll leave behind four ones. Next, looking at the tens, I notice that we need to exchange. There are 14 tens, so I will exchange 10 tens for 100, just like this. We cannot make an exchange in the hundreds column because there's only five. So in total, we have four ones, four tens and five hundreds. 134 multiplied by four is equal to 544. Poor Greg was wrong in his calculation. Let's move on now to using short multiplication or formal written method to multiply. This is the key focus in today's lesson. I will demonstrate what is happening on the place value grid as well as writing the short multiplication method. We begin again with the ones where we have three ones multiplied by four, which is equal to 12 ones. We need to exchange 10 of these ones for a 10. Notice on our short multiplication written method, we leave two in the ones column and we write one in the tens column to show the exchange. In the tens column, we have no tens. Zero tens times four is equal to zero. But we must remember to add on the one ten that we made from the exchange. So we write that in the tens column. Finally, we have 100 multiplied by four, which is four hundreds and we write that in the hundreds column. 103 multiplied by four is equal to 412. 
Here's another example of short multiplication. This time, we won't use the place value grid to guide us. We will multiply each part of 153 by 7 in turn, starting with, yep, the smallest value, the 1s. Let's start with 3 times 7, which is equal to 21. This leaves us with 1 in the 1s column and 2 in the tens column because we've needed to exchange. In the tens column, we have 5 tens multiplied by 7, which is equal to 35 tens. Now, don't forget to add the two tens that we already have from the exchanged ones. So, 35 tens add on the two exchanged tens is 37 tens. We can leave 7 in the tens column and exchange 30 tens for 3 hundreds. Finally, 100 multiplied by 7 is equal to 700. But remember we need to add on the 3 hundreds that we made from the exchange. 7 hundreds add 3 hundreds is equal to 10 hundreds. We know that 10 hundreds is 1000. So we need to leave 0 in the hundreds place and write 1 in the thousands because we've exchanged. 153 multiplied by 7 is 1071. Here's Greg again and he's got some tips to keep us on track. 147 times 6. Before we write out the short multiplication for 147 times 6, we can apply some knowledge to keep us on track. We know that 147 times 6 will have two ones. Similarly, 383 multiplied by 2. Before we carry out the full calculation, we know that it will have six ones. Three ones times 2 is equal to 6. 7 times 6 is equal to 42. Applying this trick will help us increase our accuracy for calculations. What else can we do to improve our calculation accuracy? Well here we've got 367 multiplied by 4. The answer we're given is 1088. I wonder, can we check easily whether that's correct or not? This is how I know. 300 multiply by 4 is equal to 1200. I know that the calculation 367 multiplied by 4 must be more than 1200. And if it's not, well then there's been a mistake. Now you're going to get more practice yourself using short multiplication to multiply. I would really encourage you to use those tricks to help check your accuracy. It's really important that we're multiplying and calculating correctly going forward. That finishes today's tutorial. It's time for you now to go and get more practice with your independent task. I'm asking you to apply Greg's tricks and tips to help improve your accuracy when you're calculating. Good luck!